Hey guys. Hey. Um, I want to do this live because I did promise y'all the green leaf updates or whatever. I've been a little sick and the weather in New York City is a little bit out of control. Yes, I'm sitting in my favorite spot. Dunkin' Donuts. Good morning, New York City. Good morning. So now, we on the Green Leaf episode 4 of season 3. And it opens up with Lady May. I told y'all she was going to see her friend in Atlanta. Well, her old friend happens to be named Maxine. Maxine is played by the legend, Patty LaBelle, honey. That's Patty LaBelle is in Greenleaf, honey, as Lady May's friend. The friend that she said went off to school last episode and um, she kind of um, married the bishop and the friend went to school by herself. Well, that friend has a mega church of her own. So they start talking about the old days and everything and laughing and kicking it up like old friends do. And Lady May tells her, about the marriage and the divorce. She said, you was right, I should've came. I should've came to school, and I should've did what I had to do. But now I'm getting ready to get divorced, and Lady May tells her that she wants to open up her own church, y'all. And, and Maxine said, well, why would you open up your own church when you have a big old church right there? Why don't you stay there and take over that church? and make that church yours. Well, honey, Lady May ain't crazy. She know that's gonna be one hell of a fight, but she here for it, hmm. Yes, she is, child. She is here for it, honey, she's here. And she said, let's make that church yours or whatever. So I guess after talking to her friend Maxine, who's played by Payla Bell, she gets back on the flight and goes back to home. But I guess while Lady May was on that plane, honey, homegirl had a party, had that secretary set up a party for the members of the church who they call, like, I guess they call them like the, the members of the round table. And it's for all of the members that be in the church and all that stuff. Well, honey, that house was decked out when Lady May got home. That, I forgot the um, the maid's name or whatever, but that maid hooked that church up her and that secretary hooked that church up. Flowers everywhere, decorations, this glass, oh, everything. The bar was set up. It was a it was a nice setup. And she wasn't playing. Lady May could get things done at a snap of her finger when her head is um, on something and she wants to do something, she does it. So, Lady May goes upstairs to find the bishop in her bathroom. Yes, I'm reading my notes and I'm drinking my coffee. And Dunkin' Donuts, who is playing Barry White today. I guess it's his, it's, it gotta be his birthday. I'm thinking it's his birthday. I'm not thinking it's his death day. But I'm thinking it's his birthday. But Dunkin' Donuts is playing the shit out of Barry White today, honey. So, Lady May goes upstairs to find the bishop in her bathroom. But she kept the main, the main bedroom, the main bedroom, the master bedroom has a bathroom inside. But the bishop told her, I didn't want to mess up the bathroom where I'm at because the maid has cleaned it, so I don't want to do that. So she said, she was looking at him in disgust. Like, you know how when a man do you wrong, she was looking at that nigga like, you don't get to fuck out this bathroom? If you don't get to fuck out this room, like, just looking at him. And then she says, all oh, that. He says, all oh, that. She says, oh, and gave him the face. You know how we give the niggas the resting bitch face? Like, mm-hmm. So, Jacob and his family is going to the mother's house, who they all was, and everybody was invited to this event. Then Jacob and the family is coming, and the daughter still has an attitude. Zora, his daughter, still has an attitude because... She got caught stealing that money out the collection plate. So now she acting like she walking around with an attitude like somebody did her wrong. All because she can't see that little funky boy that whole off and smacked the shit out of her in last season. Yeah, him. But when the father punched in the face. So um, now it goes to Gigi and her boyfriend talking. And you know her boyfriend is played by Rick Fox. And guys, I told y'all I was going to... um get his name because they never say his name what they said his name last night his name is Darius I said oh 
I got it. I got it. It was like hitting the lotto. Well, maybe not hitting the lotto, but that's Rick Fox. So maybe it's like hitting a little small piece of the lotto, I guess. I felt good remembering getting that boy name last that last name when I rewatched it or whatever because you know I rewatched it because like I said I haven't been feeling good. So they talking about the church and how he how she wants him to come to church because this is a church event. So she asked him when are you gonna be able to when are you gonna start going to church and he gave her some crazy you know not crazy answer but he's really not feeling church and in this episode right here now i always said why he wasn't feeling church i knew why he wasn't like going to church or why he don't he don't want to be around them church people because church people are nosy so anyway they skip over to kevin and kevin is trying to call charity to check on his son like i told you she lied last episode and said she was on tour which is kind of stupid because he didn't want you to take his son on tour. So why she lied and said that she was on tour, that was stupid. I told her she made a mistake when she did that. To check on his son or whatever. So he, she's not even picking up the phone, okay? And he's worried about his son because he knows Charity is a liar. He knows she's lying. Off the back, when you've been with somebody for a long time, yeah, he might be gay now, but he's not stupid. He knows her. He knows she's lying. So... So, he went to go see if they was back or not. They not back. She not answering no phone, no nothing. So, it cuts over to Bishop and his friend. And his friend name is Mr. Thomas. And I forgot his real name in real life, but he's an old actor. He's a very old actor. And I guess he's the one that hooked up Lady May and the Bishop. So, the Bishop invited him over there. So, he tells the old friend about the marriage and how he needs his help and whatever to help him to help Lady May jog her memory and why she needs to stay in the marriage and all that stuff. The friend owns and runs a funeral home or whatever, so he really don't get to see this friend as much. But this friend played a uh, key in him in Bishop and Lady May's relationship. I hope I'm talking over everything and everybody because I know I'm in a public place, but I really want to tell everybody to shut the fuck up. But we're not going to do that because, you know, I'm trying to sip my coffee and do these three videos. Yeah, three. I'm going to bust out this one, bust out another one, married to the medicine, and then I'm going to bust out how I feel about Cardi B and Nicki Minaj like everybody else is doing. Yeah, I'm bringing you that tea. And, um... So yeah, his friend owns the funeral home. He invited the friend. Lady May didn't know that the friend was coming. So Lady May tells the bishop, when she found out the friend was coming, she said, whatever you got up your sleeve, listen, it don't even matter. I'm done with this marriage. I'm out of here. See, now her mind is made up. See, the party is really to finesse the people. That's part of Lady May's plan. I seen it coming when she said, when, when her friend told her to take over that church. I seen where it was going or whatever. So now that she got the plan in her head to take over the church, now it's time to finesse the people and get the people to be on her side. And that's what it's all about. So Lady May told him she don't want to be bothered, and that's that. Okay, so now the party is starting. The party is starting. The, the members of the church are there, the members of the round tables, what they call them. But, see, this, this Greenleaf show is going by some of the Bible and some of the things that happen in some of these mega churches in real life. And if you go into the Bible, you know they had the night to the round table, boom. So now the members of the round table are there at this gala or whatever. So, honey, Kevin shows up and he's tight. He is mad as hell. He can't reach Charity. He ain't seen his son. And Charity has been born. Now, the way he's saying it, I guess Charity has been born for some days now. Like maybe a week. So he's upset. He's tight. He knows she out of town doing something. Because if you tell me you're on tour, and I told you just last week I ain't much of on tour, and you still go, we got a problem. Because if the shoe was on the other foot, she would have did the same thing. So I'm not even mad at him. So she hasn't shows up at the party. He's mad as hell. Gigi is the only one that sees him. And he said, your sister's not picking up my phone calls. She said, well, let me call my sister. See, Gigi trying to connect the situation because she don't really know what's going on. But she know how Kevin can get, and she don't want Kevin to do nothing drastic. So 
Gigi calls her sister. Her sister picks up Charity, picks up, and she's sitting poolside somewhere, honey, having drinks and living her bestest life. And wherever this resort is at that she's sitting at, it's like, you know, for like the upper class, because you can tell. Because it seems like she's like only, it's only like five people in this whole damn resort that's black. Yeah, I said that. That's what it looks like to me. And I noticed that's what it seems like later on in the show, too. But Charity sitting there poolside, living her best life, drinking it up. Basically, she did the same thing the mother did, but now she's doing it over. Board. The mother did it for one night last week. She did it for a whole week and a half. Now, you're doing too much. So, Gigi hands Kevin the phone. Kevin says hello, and Charity hangs up like so. And so you know Kevin is pissed. Gigi trying to finesse the situation. He's saying he gonna call the cops. Gigi like, no, don't call the cops. Let me talk to him. Try to get through the hunt. He says, okay. He's trying to be nice. Because you know the Greenleaf is a big family and it's a mega church. And if he calls the cops, he knows she's gonna get fingerprinted and all that. So that means it might hit the goddamn paper. Okay. So now Jacob is talking to his wife. And the wife wants to send the daughter away or whatever. And he's like, no, I'm not sending my daughter to no go away boot camp, boot camp for, for teenagers and all that. And my daughter be really messed up mentally. He said, I'm not doing that. And he said, I don't even know why you acting like you really going to send her anyway. You told her like you was really going to send her. not knowing, honey. But why don't did her homework, got the application, and pulled that thing out for the daughter to go. Because she's she don't really know her daughter right now. You know how teenagers can get once they get a little boyfriend and they get that first boyfriend and they already had sex, it's gonna become a problem. Her daughter has a nasty attitude. And um so it cuts over to Jacob talking to his mother, because the mother seen him she's talking about it. So he walks over to the mother. He pulls the mother to the side and he tells the mother about uh, he didn't tell he didn't tell the mother everything but he did tell the mother that the daughter sold the money out of the collection plate and and the mother says well that's my granddaughter when she was living with us when y'all all was living with me she wasn't acting like that so let me get her hmm you know how grandmothers can be let me get a hold of her ass and let me talk to her for a while. Let her live with me for a little while. Because you know she's not going to get away with that bullshit. She get away with y'all with. Because I'm not having it. Yeah, Lady May was not playing. So, basically, she's saying she want to set the daughter straight and all this and all that. I'm not mad at her. So, the bishop starts his speech. And the round table was there. Everybody was there. And, um, everybody's there. Even down... <coughs> Excuse me. Even down on Miss Cross, dirty ass is there, which is crazy because yeah, you a member of the church, but you not a member of the round table. So people want to know why the hell she is. You no know nosy people is there, and you know church members can be nosy, and that's exactly what Rick Fox is talking about. And this is why he really don't want to go to no church because people are nosy and they like to get in your business, and it's true because this episode, the members were so nosy, it was hella nosy. So. The bishop starts his speech or whatever, and he's talking about the church and he's saying thank you to the church members for, for standing up with them and, and holding them down and crises and everything like that. So he calls his kids up there to be by his side, and then he starts talking about Lady May. So when he starts talking about Lady May and how much he loves his queen and all this stuff, she starts crying. Then. She starts crying, the people at the round table, everybody's crying because whatever he, he's saying it and it sounds so good, but we all know why he's saying it because now he's trying to win her back, basically, and he don't want her to be divorced because he know if Lady May start that divorce thing, it ain't going to be nice. He going to play dirty because that's what people do, but it ain't going to be nice for him and it don't look good on the church and that mean they have to break down everything and he don't want that. So everybody starts crying and he gives her a kiss and he thinks by doing that little speech Lady May is going to forgive him. Hmm, I knew that wasn't happening, but anyway, 
So Gigi and Rick Fox, a.k.a. Darius Al, I remember that name, and Miss Cross and the other, another member of the church is standing there talking, which is the same lady that's supposed to give them the money for the taxes or whatever that they had dinner with last week. And they stand there in a circle talking, and Miss Cross asks Gigi, well, who is this talking about Rick Fox? Because we don't never see him at church. Where you been hiding him at? Now, you know she's trying to be in Gigi's business, so Gigi already knows she's being sneaky. So, um, she says, oh, no. He says, oh, my name is Darius. And, you know, I work for the newspaper, because that's what he works for. He works for the newspaper, so he has a lot of connections. And that's why he was able to look into Mrs. Cross' background the way he was able to do it. He had one of his top firms do it. And that's how he found out that the church is on that list for not paying any taxes. Okay. So, Lady May sees Mrs. Cross there and asks the bishop. Now, she was fine until she seen Mrs. Cross there. Which I'm not mad at, because why is she here? So, Lady May sees Miss Cross there, and she asks the bishop, why is she here, why is she in my house? And so, he had to go talk to Miss Cross and let her know, like, listen, I'm trying to be with my wife, I told you that already. So, Miss Cross goes into, oh, you know, I was in love with you, and you wasn't acting like that, and you was, you was in that hotel, and you wanted to look like you wanted to have sex with me, and this and this and that. So now she's, you know, remember, she's supposed to be pretending to like him so she can get the, bring the whole Greenlee family down. Hello, Latasha. Good one to touch. The T.I. was touching her butt. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You thought I forgot. <laughs> Latasha wasn't in this episode, but anyway. But, um, yeah, so my thing is, this is where the side chick don't know how to stay in her place, but... She's not really playing a side chick because she really doesn't like Bishop. She just wants to act like she got him to bring the family down. So she's going to act like the side chick that don't know how to stay in her place. So he told her she had to leave. And she got upset, honey. So she got upset. So as Miss Cross is leaving out, She's on her way out the door and she's talking to that same church member that they're supposed to be getting the money from. And she asks her, oh, I understand why I'm really not supposed to be at the party, but you're only a regular member and you're not part of the round table. So why are you here? She knows it. Because of course we're going there to see who was there, who's the members and all of that stuff. So I don't even understand how she got an invitation when she wasn't even invited. But anyway, so the lady tells her, well, I'm here because they invited me and I've been a long member and um, she basically tells her, you know, they've been having issues so that's why I'm here. And I don't understand, like, my thing is people talk too much because you cannot walk up to me and ask me why I'm not, I'm at an event. No, you cannot do that. I'm here just like you here. That's what I would have told her. But this lady is like, you know, so, mm, you know. Oh, like, this is what Rick Fox is talking about. Everybody's in everybody's business for no particular freaking reason. And I'm not mad at Rick Fox no more because now I was like, really? I was never mad because I already knew. But I'm just saying, like, how dare you walk up to me not really knowing me like that? You just became a member, so you shouldn't have been here from jump. But instead of the old lady telling Miss Cross that she didn't tell her that. She told her, oh, I'm here, you know, they've been having issues. Why you guys tell everybody business? That's not no business for you to tell this lady that you barely know. So Zora's talking to her cousin, and they're talking about the money, and Zora told her cousin that she didn't steal the money, and the money was from her birthday, and all this craziness, which it's not. You stole the money, but you don't want to tell your cousin that, because you already told your mother and that you didn't steal it, but they already know you stole it. But anyway, so then they cut back to Gigi and Darius, a.k.a. Rick Fox, and getting stopped by another member of the church that is part of the round table. I forget her name, too. Maybe because it's the aggravating ones that tell everybody business and being everybody business. It's only the older ladies that I don't remember their goddamn name. Because I think they're getting on my goddamn nerves on the low. And, um... 
she asked Gigi, oh, was that Kevin? And why is he not coming back to the church? So Gigi said, you know why he ain't coming back to the church. Y'all know that man is gay and y'all don't accept gays. So let's just cut the shit. Basically, that's what she said. Like, don't even act like you are here for gay people now. Like, just cut it out. Now you're being nosy, basically. So Gigi said, I don't understand why we don't accept gays. It's a new day and age. We need to be that church with open arms to gay people. And if they want to come to church, they want to come to our church. I don't see what the problem is. It's true. Y'all sit up there acting like y'all need this money, but in yet, y'all don't want to invite the community. Y'all don't really want to invite everybody. Y'all want to invite selected people to the church, which is crazy to me. But y'all need money though. Hmm. So Jacob tells his wife about the conversation with the mother and what the mother said about Laura coming to the house of the And you know the mother was not his wife wasn't feeling it. So at the end of the day, his wife was like, no, because um your wife, your, your mother got issues with her own kids. How she gonna deal with mine? That's what she basically said. You know, like as a shady, like tactic, like listen, your mother got issues with her own kids. She couldn't handle her own kids like that. How she gonna handle my daughter? And she got up and she walked away or whatever. And I guess she went to go find um the daughter or whatever, looking around for the daughter, but that was her time to get up and go. And she's not feeling that whole Zora going to Lady May's house to stay. She's not feeling it. And um yeah, but it's about to get crazy though. Because Sophia is outside with the boyfriend, her boyfriend in the car or whatever. And Sophia's Gigi's daughter. She had a boyfriend, she's been having that same one boyfriend for the longest. And you know they still teenagers, they start kissing and hugging and and, and Sophia feels like it's getting a little bit heavy, so she says, I think we need to go back in the house. We need to get out this car and go back in the house. So you know, like a boy, oh, well, I'm going to go home. She said, don't be mad. He said, I'm not, even though he was. And he let, he, lets, he goes home, and Gigi goes back. I mean, Gigi's daughter goes back inside, but she goes up to her room. She goes up to her room, and she finds that Zora is in her room, and she's on her computer. Never mind you. Zora parents, which is Jacob and his wife, took all the stuff away from Zora. She don't have nothing. TV, phone, laptop, she has nothing. Because they know she wants to communicate with that boy. So she finds her talking on the computer, and Zora sees snatch the computer out of her hand and realizes she started, she was talking to the boyfriend or whatever. So um, Zora, um, so sad. Are you really serious? Are you still talking to him? Like, why are you still talking to him? So they start arguing and fighting. So as they arguing and fighting, they tussling and all that. Because Sophia said, why are you with a boy that hits on you? Like, why are you doing that to yourself? And all that. Whatever. So she snatches the she, she They start arguing and fighting soon. And... Dora's mother walks in, which is Jacob's wife. She walks in, she finds him fighting, and she breaks him up. She looks at the computer and sees that Dora has been talking to that boy. She says, so this is what y'all fighting over? So, Dora, honey, got all bucked with her mother, started yelling and screaming, put her fingers in her face. Her mother had to grab her hand and tell her, like, listen, I'm not having that shit. I don't know who you think you're talking to, but you better calm, your fucking, calm that shit down or whatever and she turns and and, le and she tells her mother like listen yeah i'm moving out because i guess that's what she told the boyfriend on the computer yeah i'm moving out when i'm 18 and there's nothing y'all can do about it and this is yeah you know how teenagers is honey and i think she's a little bit either they either sophia and zora are the same age or sophia i think is a little bit older no, Zora, I think, is a little bit older than Sophia. And I guess she's about to turn 18, and she's telling her, told her mother, I'm, I'm leaving when I'm 18, there's nothing I can do about it, I'm grown, I, I, I. Honey, if I was the mama, i put that half out right now. Honey. So, hmm, baby, 
you go girls today. Honey, I'm going to jail. But anyway, the church member comes the next day. The church member comes to Gigi's office and tells Gigi, listen, now, the, sh the, 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 the church is in the news now for the whole tax thing and this and this and that. Now the church member, see, Gigi already knew. But now it's in the papers, it's online. Gigi's looking at it as the lady comes in the office. The lady already let Gigi know. Listen, I seen it. That's the same lady that stopped Gigi the other night and asked her about Kevin. Now, she says, well, if the church needs you to step up, would you step up? Would you become the leading lady and the bishop and take over the church for us? Because we need somebody that knows what they're doing or whatever. And your parents is going through a lot with these taxes and everything, and it's not good going the church. So Gigi just had her mouth open like, what? Gigi didn't want to take over no church. She wasn't there for that. Or whatever. So then they cut over to Jacob and his wife taking Zora to Lady May's house. And Jacob's wife got this look on her face like, I do not want to bring my child here, but I know my child need help. So I'm going to do this because my husband wants to do it. I'm following my husband's footsteps. Because remember, she's the first lady of the church too. So she, Lady May sees a look on her face and she says, oh, don't worry, and gives her a hug. Jacob's wife never hugged her back, honey. She's shady and cold and she's not feeling it. And, and, um, and, and she's not feeling it. So they cut back over to Sherry. Sherry is in this room. Like I said, filled with white people. There's one black girl hanging on the wall listening. Charity is singing her little heart out. She will survive. And when she got to the end of I Will Survive, the cops walked right mad and she got a drink to her face. Okay? And the white lady on the piano, because she's playing the piano for Charity as she's singing, she said, oh, you sound like this singer. This background singer, you do sound like a singer. They don't realize Charity is part of the middle church. Charity, I guess, wanted to go somewhere where she's not known. So nobody knows her there, but the cops come in, they know her, and they grabbed up and said, you need to come with us. The white lady with her little silly self says, oh, I knew you was famous, not knowing they coming to lock Charity up because she's been there for kidnapping because Kevin don't call the goddamn cops, I'm honey. Not trying to do that, Julia. Honey, he don't call the goddamn cops because she has been going too long. He ain't seen his son. She ain't picking up the phone, and he is not having it, baby. The next episode, y'all, is going to be so goddamn lit. <laughs> it's going to be on fire, damn man. And I can't wait. So that's how it went off. It went off. But Charity going to goddamn jail and the son sitting there in the shoulder. So now you got to take your son to the police saying, with you because you being locked up. Baby. <laughs> God. That's what I said when I seen it. I said, yeah, Kevin ain't playing with her ass. He ain't trying to play with her, honey. And it was lit. And it went off just like that, y'all. So let's talk about it in the comments. My name is